Susie? It's me. Lucy! You know, I knew Lucy long before Desi did. In fact, I've often wondered what would happen if she'd married me instead of Desi. What would it be like if I were the husband and I loved Lucy? I know one thing, she wouldn't be doing those crazy things if I were her husband. <laughs> One of them must pitch for Cleveland. Oh, Ethel, baby, let me help you. Oh, Fred was going to carry one of them, but he didn't want to throw me off balance. <laughs> well, honey, where is Fred? He tipped the cab driver 10 cents by mistake, and he's trying to talk him out of it. Fred, I'm in here. Coming. Honey, where's the spore session? The spore session. Desi, why do you have to spread the Sunday papers all over the living room? That's the only way I can read it. <laughs> Look, dear, isn't this cute? Yeah, real cute. Lucy! Again? We already done that bit. <laughs> Relax, this is for Eve Arden's new baby. Oh. <laughs> Telephone, dear. I'm knitting. So I'm reading. Well, somebody's got to answer it. You're closer to it. <laughs> not now I'm not. Hello? Who? What? Hey, just a minute, please. Who is it? I think it's somebody from a bakery. A bakery? Yeah, a guy called Solomon. Ed Solomon. Ed Solomon? He says he's selling toast in this part of the town. <laughs> Let me take it. Hello. Well, hello. It's Ed Sullivan of Toast of the Town. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, well, how have you been, Ed? Uh, no, no, uh, we were just sitting around home. We're not doing... Very much. It's, it's, uh, it's sure nice talking to you, Ed. Sure. You want to come over and visit us? Wonderful. Nice. Sure, right away, sure. Where are you? You're at the gas station. Well, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, Ed. Okay, not bye. No, Ed, 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 Ed. Oh, Ed. <laughs> What's the matter with you? We don't want him to see the house looking like this. What's the matter with it? It looks fine to me. For heaven's sake. 
Honey, why don't you let him see you the way we really are? You know, natural, with no pretense. The show is called the Toast of the Town, not Crumbs of the Town. <laughs> and put your shoes on. Why? He knows I got feet. Oh! <laughs> to stay natural with no pretenses. I just, just, just doing it for you so that you wouldn't be embarrassed. Oh. What do you think he wants? Well, I don't know. He probably wants us to come and see his show when we're in New York. Oh. And, you know, be introduced from the audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen him do that. Yeah. Yeah. People sit down and introduce him. He's on his way over. He is? He isn't. He isn't. He is. He isn't. Well, is he or isn't he? <laughs> oh, well, Don, that's just wonderful. Thanks so much for calling. Oh, Jesse, isn't that wonderful? Oh, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. Just think, you and I, aren't you excited? Well, I might be if I knew what it was all about. Huh? Oh, oh, that was Don Sharp. Ed Sullivan is going to do the whole show about us. Wow. How about that? Oh, boy. All about us? Yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Are you nervous? Nervous? <laughs> Why should I be nervous? Are you nervous? No. No. something you wanted to say to us? Yeah, but I'm so winded. <laughs> you know, I thought when you came out of New York, I'd love to have you on Toast of the Town. Uh, you, you'd like us to take a bow from the audience? Sure, honey, that's what he means. Oh, sure. No, 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 I, I want to do the whole show about you, you, you too. About us? Oh, my heavens, Jesse, did you hear that? Ed, did you hear... Oh, you told me, yeah. <laughs> Toast of the Town and the whole slice about us. You know, do you say, take the highlights of your career, the way you started in movies, then the way you met and got married, then television? Yeah, you, you know mean all the high dramatic points. What sort of points? High dramatic. On our show, it's Mercomatic. Mercomatic! Oh, oh, that's funny, honey! Mercomatic. He's a funny man! And look, look, people say he never laughs. Yes, that's funny! <laughs> But, it, you know, now, to, to discuss it, if we could only start off with that first film you ever made, you know, the you film? You mean the final film? film? Uh -huh. I got it right here in the house. Would you like to see it? Oh, that'd be just what wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. Yeah, honey, run it down as far as the clown bit, huh? The clown bit? Okay, honey. Yes. And by the way, could you tell me how to get a hold of the merches? You mean Vivian Vance and Bill Frawley? 
Always forget. I always think of them as the merchants. Yeah, well, everybody does. I've been trying to get them. I called their agent and left a message at the house, but yeah. then, you know... Mm. Well, I know how to get huh? Pardon me. Hi, Lucy. Well, You had company, Ed Sullivan. Hello, how are you? Well, I'm glad to see you so here. Nice to see you. This is a coincidence. Yeah. I was, oh, pardon me. Well, Bill. Hi. I just happened to be in the neighborhood until I drop in. Well, glad to see you. Is that Vivian? Why, Bill, now I didn't Imagine seeing you here. Yes, How are you? Goodness, oh, I'm fine. Good. Uh, Bill. Yes? You know Ed Sullivan, don't you? Sure, why? Why, Ed, I never oh. dreamed of seeing you here. Be Glad there. to see you. Thank That's you, Ed. Wonderful. You do, too. Uh, Vivian. Uh, did your agent by any chance tell you, too, that Mr. Sullivan is going to be here? Agent? I haven't heard from my agent in two years. Well, you were going to hear from me because we've got great news. We're going to do a toast to the town about Lucille and Desert. Really? really? And we want you two in it. Uh? What? Yeah, we'd have to have some number to do. Number? Oh, well, this is kind of sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, how about that number we tried in one of the old Lucy shows, that Hollabaloo? Oh, that was a darling yeah, number. It's a little old-fashioned from about 1913. 1913? He taught it to me. Ha! <laughs> well, I'd love to see the, uh, have the two of you do it. Oh, well, now, you want to see it now? I just happen to have the costumes down in my car. Yes. Uh, Viv, huh? um, I thought you, neither of you knew that the other one was going to be here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go change. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Bill, Bill, what about the music? Well, we just happen to have a record in the car. Oh, just happen yeah. to have a have a record. Oh, oh those two, terrific. really. Could I have a cigarette? Oh, right here, Ed. Especially when two lovers are alone. The tender little words we use are private as a rule. But, but we, we want, want you, you to hear, hear the, the song, song we call our own. You be my hollabaloo, falafel, -fal dolphin, and in the spring. I'll be your falafaloo. Falafel, awful, and by the ring, my honey, we'll go to Honolulu, the Kula Zulu, just you and me. If you say that you will be my Honolulu, colossal Dalford. Oliver, 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 just you to me. <laughs> if you say that you will be my hollabaloo, colossal doffer, flollopaloo, colossal doffer, hollabaloo, the coolest, the coolest, the Oliver, 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 Oliver,
wonderful. Now, you got to do that on our show in New York, huh? Oh, we'd love it. Love it. Yes. You know, I'm getting a great kick out of this because the last time I was on a stage with Vivian was out in Hollywood the night I was giving out the Emmy Awards for the Academy. Uh-huh. And I gave you your Emmy. <laughs> Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends are blindfolded. The blindfolds are all in place, panel. Mm -hmm. They are, yeah. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? of our mystery challenger, we change the form of questioning a bit. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you Duke Snyder? Are you Duke <laughs> Snyder? That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. I didn't hear the answer. Uh, no. Who well, answered? Did I you? did. Well, why? You want to hear the real one answer? Sure. Yes. Would you answer the question, please? Uh, are you Duke Snyder? <laughs> well, just to clear it up once and for all, uh, uh, could we have seen you on television earlier today? Mm-hmm. Miss Francis? Boy, I wasn't around earlier today. Uh, oh, I meant the series. You meant the series? Yeah. No, but it isn't, a, it isn't a man, There's is There's been it? no call for a conference, No, all right, Francis, all right, I'm terribly sorry. Are you engaged in the entertainment world? Mm-hmm. Sir? Are you, and I hope you are, a lady? <laughs> By that I mean of the female persuasion. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> are you in the motion pictures? Uh -huh. Mr. Lewis? And you are also in television and... Uh, let me rephrase my first question, because this got an, an unusual answer. Could we have seen you on television earlier today? That was yes. Mm-hmm. That Ms. was Francis? yes before. I still don't understand the answer. Only now it's not a ball player. I don't think. <laughs> uh, are you here in New York just for the World Series? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you a husband who is possibly just as well known as you are? Yeah. Miss <laughs> Gilgallan? Uh, have you ever made any records where you sang? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Lewis. But, uh, I did see you earlier on television today. <laughs> Good. I've got to, should I disqualify myself, John? Because this ridiculous question, uh, you know, I, well, no, I disqualify no myself. I know who it is. I know Take a guess. Take a guess. I know who it is. Well, say it. That's what you're The world's saying. greatest comedian, Lucille Ball. <laughs> I don't know. Is that right? Mm-mm. <laughs> It's makes not. It four down and six to go, Miss You sure it's not Duke Snyder? <laughs> <laughs> not Jesse Arnaz. Uh, you say that you're married. Does the man that you're married to also in the picture business? Yeah. Mr. Yes, sir? Can, Can I take a wild guess? Probably yeah. not. Are sure. you Loren Bacall? Lorenz, oh, for heaven's sake, there you go. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you the voluptuous blonde type? I don't think so. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mr. Lewis. Are you sure I saw you on time? <laughs> Yeah, I won't let that count as a question, All but right, you are reassured. You. Uh, do you have anything to do with the program, uh, with the Lucy show? Mm-hmm. Miss Francis? It's not Desi Arnaz. <laughs> 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 
You're on I Love Lucy? Uh -huh. I mean, is that the question that Bob just asked? Yeah. Well, it, it, the question was, do you have anything to do with the uh, I Love Lucy show? She doesn't sound like a stagehand. No. <laughs> Are you Lucy's girlfriend? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> Six down and four to go, this is sir. If it's I... both of them. <laughs> That was me. That was you. Yeah, that was which, which one was <laughs> That's what made it she so much fun. She was a Swedish one, and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> Swedish? Swedish. Swedish. <laughs> well, you had some kind of an accent, didn't you? Yeah. What, Swedish? Swedish. What is Swedish? <laughs> Cuban sweet. <laughs> Cuban sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very Isn't that funny, a dirty Robert? trick? Yeah, you're pretty sure. Sure. Well, anything, but you, I'm sure you don't mind it. Because one reason, actually, that um, Desi and Miss Lucille are here is tomorrow night's a happy night when you all come back for the new season at 9 o'clock. Yeah, but that's not really the reason. The reason is that we love you so very, very much. And every time we get to New York, we love to visit with you. Well, I like that. I must say this, I speak for all of us. We had a wonderful time when you visited us last time. And we've had as much fun this time, and we hope that you come back and see us again. Thank next you. year, same time. Wonderful time, to same see station. you both. Will you go and say hello Next to year, we'll, be, we'll bring both of the kids next year. All right, good. Good deal. Nice to see you. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. As you know, it's amazing how their I Love Lucy show has remained at the top of the ratings all these years without giving away any money. Of course, Lucy does some pretty wacky things, but then married to Desi, what can you expect? You know, I knew Lucy long before Desi did. In fact, I've often wondered what would happen if she'd married me instead of Desi. What would it be like if I were the husband and I love Lucy? I know one thing, she wouldn't be doing those crazy things if I were her husband. <laughs> I can't talk to you now. Ricky will be home any minute, and I have a seal in the closet. Lucy, what are you up to? Well, I had a chance to get in the show business, and I took it. I'm an assistant in Captain Blystone's trained seal act. I'll tell you all about it when you come home from the beach next week. We are back. I'm down at the corner delicatessen. We'll be home in five minutes. Oh, but you can't come home. Captain Blystone is sleeping in your bed. <laughs> Captain Blystone? What's a perfect stranger doing in our bed? Well... He isn't exactly perfect. He's got a broken leg. He slipped on a flounder. I threw the seal. Yeah, listen, I gotta hang up now. Now, just a minute. Just a minute, Lucy. You've got a seal in the closet, and Captain Blystone is in our bed. Where are Fred and I gonna sleep? Don't bother me with your problems. I got troubles of my own. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to tell Fred? Don't tell him anything. Just come on up here, and I'll think of something. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> you, sweetheart. You're the most wonderful husband in the whole world. Did you miss me today, Ricky? See? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lucy. What have you done? Who, me? Yeah. The last time you kissed me like that, you wrecked the car, 
The uh, insurance company canceled all my insurance on everything, and you did my laundry in the wiring mixer. <laughs> what are you talking about? I give you a kiss every day. I know, but this is October. You just kissed me all the way through Lincoln's birthday. <laughs> That's the way it is with you hot-blooded Latins. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You're too suspicious. Now, I haven't done a thing. <laughs> Yeah, one of them must pitch for Cleveland. Well, I have a fan in there that circulates the fumes. See, yeah. we need an exterminator, dear. Yeah, but why are you fumigating the place? That's the landlord's job. Well, Fred and Ethel are away. I just thought I'd help. Oh, you're always helping, like when we went on our honeymoon. You thought we'd be lonesome, so you invited your mother to come along. Well, I was just trying to help. Who were you helping, your father? <laughs> you had no to pick on me, Ricky. I only do things to please you, like any normal American housewife. Normal. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this? Ah. Uh, what are these Texas anchovies doing? Here? <laughs> uh, that's my first dividend. I joined the Herring of the Month Club. <laughs> well, that's good thinking. On a dull night, we can get marinated together. <laughs> oh, you should. I gotta get some sleep. I got a very important audition tomorrow morning. An audition? Yes, I'm, I'm sort of auditioning for the Havana Symphony Orchestra. Oh, honey, how wonderful. Is it a big orchestra? 100 pieces, 99 bongos and a sweet potato. <laughs> oh, honey, Stupendo, how I'll wonderful. see you. Fred was going to carry one of them, but he didn't want to throw me off balance. Well, honey, where is Fred? He tipped the cab driver 10 cents by mistake, and he's trying to talk him out of it. Fred, I'm in here. Coming! Hi. Well, Fred, I didn't recognize you. Hi. You've changed. Yeah, well, it's the fresh air, you know, makes you feel like a new man. Well, you look like a new man. Took off a little weight, put on a little hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's my Freddy. He's my poopsie whoopsie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, you're right. He has changed. <laughs> All right, break it up. Let's not overdo it. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. Oh, up uh, uh, No, no, wait, don't go. Don't go. S stick around and I'll make some coffee. Yeah, make some coffee. I'll make some coffee. We'll stay and have a cup of coffee, honey, huh? Now, while you're here, don't you think you ought to give Rick Ricky back his golf clubs and his tennis racket? After all, he was nice enough to loan them to you. Big deal. I couldn't play. He didn't leave me any balls. <laughs> Very gay. <laughs> you just returning from a wet back luau? <laughs> They'll never let him in. <laughs> hey, hi, Ethel. Hi. They're fumigating the closet, you know. Yeah, what is that? With Don't the worry thing? about a thing. <laughs> Say, how come you, uh, you came back so soon? I thought you were going to spend another week at the beach. Well, we were, but the grunion stopped running, so we didn't have anything to eat. Oh, no, the grunion is not stopped running. I was just tired of finding a pelican for my breakfast every day. <laughs> you did what? I was just tired of finding a pelican for my breakfast every day. They didn't stop running. <laughs> You're trying to tell me something. <laughs> Come on, Ethel, let's get out of here before I lose my entire temper. And lose that accent, too. Uh, uh, Fred, we, we, uh, no, no, Lucy, yeah? Lucy, Lucy. Oh, uh, oh, don't go. No. Uh, look, while we're all here, why don't we play charades? Yes, charades? charades? Lucy, yes. I, I'm getting in the bed. All right, you get in the bed and we'll try to guess what you are. Yes. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, charades. I've got to get some sleep, honey. I've got an audition tomorrow. And you invite your friends in the middle of the night to play games. What do you think I am? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Ah, ah, the beast from Hollow Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> 
I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I feel sorry for me, too. <laughs> Come on, Ethel, let's go upstairs. Oh, no, you can't go upstairs. Why not? Oh, why not? Oh, uh, uh Lucy? Uh, Lucy, what have you done now? Well, I was only trying to surprise him with a little anniversary present. Oh, <laughs> yeah. an anniversary yeah, present? Yeah, a present. What is it? I had your apartment fumigated. Fumigated? Yeah, and it has to stay closed up until all the termites are gone. Well, that's my wife. <laughs> well, it could be worse. She could be my wife. <laughs> Don't look now, but I think one of your termites has got a wooden leg. What is that? The building settling? Settling? This building is 40 years old. I'm gonna go upstairs. Oh, no, now relax, Fred. There might be a man upstairs. Oh, don't be silly. If there was a man up there, I'd go up. <laughs> Lucy, let's get some sleep. Maybe we're keeping our guests from leaving. Well, they're staying here. Staying here? What's wrong with the hotel? Yeah, what's wrong with the hotel? Hotels cost money. Yeah, what's wrong with here? <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but he's got the first dollar he ever spent. <laughs> well, you can fight it out. I've got to get some sleep. I'm well, now, 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 look, uh, Ethel and I are sleeping in there. This is the boys' room. Come on, Ethel, dear. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Ethel. Wait a minute, honey. Huh? Don't you want to sleep here with your husband? Well, uh... No, she doesn't. <laughs> how do you like that? I marry Lucy and wind up with Desi. <laughs> <laughs> One chorus of Babalu and out you go. Mira que tú tienes cosas en Arizona sin vergüenza este soquete, coro. Careful, I have friends in the immigration department. <laughs> Do something about those sinuses. <laughs> you sound like Ethel. <laughs> Say, uh, you got an extra pair of pajamas, sport? Yeah, in the closet. Gracias. Gracias to you, too. <laughs> Are you asleep? No, I'm awake. Your eyes are closed. Oh, they're open. I just got the lids over. <laughs> my eyeballs from getting dusty. <laughs> what do you want from me? Well, Ethel said she couldn't fall asleep without a little bite. Well, if you think I'm gonna get up and bite her, you're crazy. Somebody bit me in the back of my neck and it was wearing your perfume. <laughs> Lucy, what's going on here? What's I don't know, but there's closet? something going down. Right over the closet! Don't! Hey! <laughs> Wait a minute, what is that? It's a beach ball for the little girl next door. Little girl next door? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the little girl, Sophie Tucker? <laughs> No, no, never mind what? that, dear. Just leave that Wait in there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Never what mind that. This? Just leave it there. Hey, what Where is that? Look what I found. What is this? Uh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, it's um, uh, Grandma Zuza Zylofonovich. Oh, don't tell me you play that thing. Well, I have taken a few lessons. Yes. 
Who from, a seal? Yeah. Yeah, I took lessons from a seal. Yeah? Well, yeah. Now, let's hear you play it. Oh, you, you don't want to hear me play it tonight. Oh, so come on, on. give us a tour. Oh, no, I haven't got my music or anything. Go ahead, thank you. No, no. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't want to hear me play, do you, Ethel? Uh-huh. <laughs> came out of that closet, what was that? Well, I forgot to introduce you. That's my music teacher. Yeah. <laughs> this has always been Hollywood's favorite place for winter sports. Co-star, old Ski Knows Hope. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to read between the lines. Lucy has made quite a few pictures with Bob. Their latest one is Critics' Choice. This particular day, Lucy had to do a scene where she took some fall, and boy, did she work hard. Now, mine, that was just a rehearsal. All right, action. Uh-oh. Something went wrong. And she's got to do it again. Someone once said that Lucille Ball stands alone as the greatest comedian of our time. And that, and that goes for sitting down, too. Hey, Lucy, in as much as we won't be seeing each other for a while, I was wondering if you'd like to settle our little goof bet. You mean the $10 we bet on who'd blow the most scenes during the picture? Quite. Well, certainly, let's settle up right now. Okay. Oh, come on. You blew more scenes than I did. Me? You've been counting on all 11 toes again. I have to call in the UN to settle this. Well, shall we recapitulate? Can we do that on television? <laughs> we're going to do it right now. What about that scene where you were telling your mother about the terrible review I had given your play? Listen to this. Opening night report by Parker Ballantyne. I think it's time for all us Transylvanian peasants to pick up our torches and march menacingly up to that castle on the hill because Dr. Frankenstein is making monsters again. Marge, get me a drink. This time, he's attached the arms and legs of Agamemnon. 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 <laughs> Okay, one for the poor sport. <laughs> now, let's go to the city room at the newspaper you work for. Oh, you were solid, Maxie Rosenblum. You told the truth about Ivy's performance at Helen of Troy. You remember? Now, why can't you let someone else write the review? Who, him? Harvey Rittenhouse? Well, he's not that bad. Harvey Rittenhouse is a blithering idiot who sits in off-Broadway theaters and sees nothing but me falling in a wall, open uh, uh, walk and right in there. <laughs> Well, I heard Lawrence Olivier stutter once, too. Of course, he had a spear in his chest. <laughs> what about our big dramatic scene? You know where our marriage is blowing up and you're leaving? You should have left for drama school. Tonight, I don't have a husband. You made the rules. But I just want to know one thing. When does opening night end? At midnight, at 2, at 6 in the morning? When? 
Because after the show, I'm going home with Dion, and that's... You don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, any girl's bound to be nervous when she's breaking up her community property. Now, how about the way you goofed my close-up in that scene? And you were just a voice off camera, but not far enough off. Angie, you're my husband. I mean, I'm your husband. <laughs> okay, but let's not forget that you boo-booed when we made the coming attraction trailer. Well, let me think, Bob. Um, you're a man of the world. Mm -hmm. Playboy. Sportsman. <clears throat> bon vivant. In fact, the kind of handsome debonair fellow you would expect to be the husband of a supremely beautiful, talented, fascinating girl who drives men mad. Oh, I thought you were going to say that I play a guy so sophisticated he can handle the most compromising situation and never turn a hair. Bob, honey, don't show up, don't show up, don't show up. Don't show up. You see, I was in a tank at Marine Land with three very precocious porpoises. Uh, I know this is a silly question, Lucy, but how did you get into a tank with three porpoises? Well... You see, according to the script, my little boy dropped his ball into the tank at Marineland, and I had to go in and get it. Well, what happened? Well, I didn't get the ball, but three porpoises almost got me. <laughs> Lucy, I've got a great idea. Well, what, what, what? Why don't we show them that little scene right now? I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Why don't we show them that little scene right now? Why didn't I think of that? You will, honey. You okay. will. <laughs> Roll the film, will you, fellas? <laughs> Marineland, California. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, that was just the last thirty seconds That's of our show. That's pretty funny little scene. Was yes. was the uh, water cold? Cold. It was freezing, and I was in it up to my neck for forty-five minutes. That's how long it took to shoot those thirty seconds you just saw. Well, what was the trouble? Well, like I told you, they were very precocious porpoises. They just didn't stick to the script. They started ad-libbing, and one of them got very inquisitive toward the end. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have all the right answers. I'm, uh, I'm getting a little inquisitive myself. Can we uh, run the rest of the film and show the folks uh, exactly what took place outside of the 30 seconds on your show? Right. Okay, let's take a look. There was also a seal in the tank. A seal? Yeah. This is stuff we didn't use. Get out of the way, buddy. There's this seal one. wanted to get in the raft with me. Look at this. Watch. Watch how fast he gets up there. Wow! <laughs> you yeah, know, he only weighs about 1,500 pounds, too. Well, we don't know. I look like a red snapper, I guess. <laughs> All right, already. Go, go, go. Get going. You're the director telling him to go, go, go. <laughs> Seal a go-go. That was not supposed to happen. No. And it was so cold, I didn't have my wetsuit on. I was trying to protect my hair, and I couldn't talk. I could hardly breathe. Now I have my wetsuit on. Come here. Come here, then. the director talks to me? No, no. Just to get your hair wet. No. Put some water in there. No, I'll, I'll do it. All right, we'll get it. Do it. <laughs> now, this is when I got in there with a... The... Now, that's what they were supposed to do, and then come up and talk. And now we go to work. I'm fine. No, you're happy at first. Then you'll go into a cry. And he's just... Now you're going to go... I just kept on crying like an idiot. I, could, I didn't know what was going on behind me, so I just had to keep I, on crying. I tell and you, Lucy, you're a very brave woman. You'd never get me in there. Oh. You'd be afraid? Yeah, I, I get shook up opening a can of tuna fish. 
I'm the original chicken of the sea. <laughs> Do the fish work for scale? Now they gave me some fish. They decided maybe if I threw some fish in there, it would help. It didn't help at all. <laughs> Told me to put the fish in my blouse. How do you like that? <laughs> if I had done that, they'd have come right in the blouse after it. <laughs> Now, I got, I got him one at a time to sit up, you see, but it didn't do any good. Look at that tail. When you get hit by that tail, baby, you know you have it. <laughs> what do they weigh, Lucy, the uh, porpoises? Oh, the biggest one there was 1,500 pounds. The, uh, there was another one, 900 Whoops. and one. Is that the first time you worked with porpoises? <clears throat> Are you kidding? How many people go around working with porpoises? <laughs> Not only the first, it's probably the last. <laughs> I, just got, I just got hit there. And I turned around like By the that. tail? By the tail, yes. He went pew. They use their nose as a weapon, is that, uh, is that right? Yes, you know that they are the only natural uh, enemy of the shark, and they use like a karate chop they give them. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's, they have a long steel snoop, you know, that's covered with satin. That's what it looks like and, and feels like. Uh, they give you these karate chops. And they don't bite, but they, 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 they chop at whatever they find. In the, in the ocean. They either roll it out or they roll it in. But, oh, here he comes. Here's the inquisitive one. This guy got very inquisitive. He, he's the one with the black belt, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the real inquisitive fellow has been, see him going in down below there? He's been going in and coming up by my knees. Like he's saying, you know, dig this crazy mermaid. What's she doing in there? <laughs> but he really was beginning to bug me and watch now. Right after this shot, I think it is, where he really came in and said, all right, and he talked to me first. Whoops. There he is. Now watch. Now watch. He's been going around. Look. must have been a pretty frantic afternoon. Tell, Lucy, how do you follow three porpoises? Well, now, Steve, I've been in television long enough to know that the only thing that can follow three porpoises is one commercial. I'll buy that. <laughs> Listen, honey, tonight I gotta tell the ladies about the new squeeze come little home permanent, and I need your help. Oh, you sure do. It's a new squeeze comb lilt home permanent. No, no, you don't understand, honey. Yes, tell me the name of this string here. That's a squeeze comb. I mean, it's a squeeze comb. No, 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 this. Oh, that's a comb tip. Thank you. Now, this comb tip comes the lotion right into your hair out of a squeeze bottle. Remember how we gals used to dip, dab those messy lotions on? Well, that's out. With new little, you just squeeze the bottle and it combs itself right in. It's so simple, even he could do it if he had to. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. And you'll get the most beautiful, longest-lasting home permanence you've ever had. Thank you, honey. Sorry. Now, ladies, remember this name. Squiz, comb, lilt. Squeeze, comb, lilt, home permanent. Good night. <laughs>